All right, so to do that, I will first divide everything by 0.8. Okay, so I'm going to do, okay, V equals 10 divided by 0.8 will be 12.5 minus E to the S is change. Um, and then these guys here, they'll also be 12.5 over here. Oops, 12.5 over here. And then this is from a divided by 0.8, it's going to be V naught. And so it's going to be V naught. And then this V naught we already know to be 16.5. And this I'm substituting by 3. So I'm multiplying by 3 here. Cool. So this turns out to be minus 4. Um, minus 4. And what I get is 12.5. So that's going to be 4 times 4. So 12.5 plus... Because I have a negative here, and this is minus 4, so negative, negative, plus, so plus 4e to the <clears throat> um, point 0.8, so that's 2.4, 2.4e. And now, obviously, I can do this, I need, without a calculator, I can do this in my head, so I need to, give me a second. All right, so this turns out to be 12.86. And that's going to be in meters per second because the problem statement says so, right? Because the problem statement says that the v, the v is given in meters per second. I also would not be able to know if this were was um, meters per second or kilometers per hour or whatever. Okay, cool. So now that's one part of the problem. The other part, if we were to continue, is we get this guy here. And now we're going to have to integrate once again. Because we now know the velocity that the ball has when it reaches the bottom of the lake. What we don't know is what is the distance of the lake. How deep is the lake so that we're able to calculate um, given the position. So we need to know the position, equate for the position. And thankfully we have that. Um, thankfully we know how the velocity changes with time. So therefore we know this. Actually, you know what I should do? I'll keep it as is. Okay. <clears throat> so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to know because I know V is just how position changes with time. I'm going to substitute this guy here by dx dt. Right, so that obviously is going to trigger another integration. Um, a lot of fun for everybody. Um, now with an additional term, so watch out for that. And what I'm going to do here is, let's do in steps, so 0.8 dx as we integrate from 0, which is because we're starting in 0 all the way to any x that I want, will be equal to the integral of 0 to any t that I want for, there's two terms here, so for 10 dt minus integral of 0 to t of e minus 0 0.8 t, 10 minus 0.8 v naught. Thankfully, this is a constant, so we don't have to worry about that. Only thing we need to worry is this guy here, dt. <clears throat> Brilliant. So this uh, turns out to be x minus 0 times point, point 0.8, so point 0.8x over here, or delta x if you want. And over here, we're going to have just the integral of that guy, so 10 to the t. And then here is going to be a bit longer, because once again, I'm going to have to do a substitution. And what I'm going to do here is, once again, I'm going to say, okay, so now my substitution is going to be, I'm going to call, this whole thing is a constant, so I can leave the integral. So all I want to do is substitution for this guy here. So I can do the integration of e to the u. e to the u is just going to be e. That's going to be helpful. So all I want to do is minus 0.8t equals u. Therefore, du dt equals minus 0.8. Okay, so <clears throat> what does that mean? That means that this will become... All right, I'm going to first take that constant out of this whole mess so that it doesn't bug me. Then e integral is going from 0 to u of e 
to the U. Let's change color so that we don't forget between U here. But to be able to put the U, I need to do the U divided by 0 0.8. All right, cool. All right, cool. So now this integral is super simple. It's just going to be e to the u. Note that this guy is a constant, so it's going to come and join all of these other constants over here. I'm very happy. So I get rid of this. <clears throat> then this integral is just going to be e to the u. Let's get rid of this. And then u, we know, is a co-name for the u minus 0 0.8t. Minus 0 0.8t. And we're varying this from 0 to t. <clears throat> All right. What is next? Let's now substitute t and 0 there. Oh, and this is, know that there's a, put a lot of a little yet, yellow flag here because <clears throat> this is a point in which a lot of people are going to probably do this integration wrong. And it's very silly, but it's easy to get confused. All right, so now we we'll go ahead and keep everything as is over here. Everything key is kept as is. And then here on the right hand side, I'm just going to substitute very simply. Okay, so I'm going to do, let's do this multiplication of e to the t. So it's going to be 0 0.08t minus e to the. 0 0.8 times 0, right? So this is e to the 0. And that's not 0, right? That's not 0 whatsoever. That is 1. So watch out because that <clears throat> can be tricky. That can be tricky. If you don't, watch out. Brilliant. Okay, so that's going to be 1. And then we're going to have to multiply that 1 by everything else. So let's go ahead and do that 1 again, 1 at a time. Here, I'm going to get e to the t, m to the t. And I have a negative here, so this is going to be a positive. And then I have this again. Oops. Like so. Whew. All right, cool. <clears throat> All right. So at this point now, we can start getting rid of some things. Um, simplify this equation a bit. First thing I want to note is that this guy here divided by, this is going to be 12.5 again. It's just going to be 1. This is 16.5, so this is negative 4. This whole thing here is negative 4. Um, this whole thing obviously has to be negative 4 too. What is those? That's pretty much it. That's a good way to simplify. And then we have to divide everything by 0.8, right? Because of this point here. So I'm going to have to send div that point 0.8 dividing. X will be equal to 10. So that's going to be 12.5. 12.5t. 12 12 negative, negative. It's going to be a positive. Positive 4 times e to the minus 0.8t minus 4. Um, all right, skip a step here. 10, then I need to divide this by 0.8. This by 0.8, and this by 0.8. So this becomes 12.5. This becomes 5, and this becomes 5. All right, cool. Um, let me think. Yeah, this is as simplified as we can do, I think. All right, so this is an equation that pretty much defines the position of the ball with respect to the x-axis, which is the vertical axis in this case, because we said so, um, for any time that I want. So in this case, I want to know what is x when time is 3 seconds, right? Because that's when I know the ball reaches the bottom. So very straightforward. x will be 12.5 times 3 plus 5 times point. 3 um, to 2.4. Again, 
minus 5 as a constant here. And this gives me, what did I get? About 40, so 37.5, and I know that, so that's going to be 42.5 minus whatever that number is. Give me a second. Yeah, so, so this is like the price bond number. It's going to be close to 0.5. So the whole thing is x equals about 42.5 meters. And again, I know it's meters because of the problem statement. Right? We can trace it back if we want, but that's how, you know, straightforward. Straightforward way. Ooh, all right. Um, sorry. Minus the, the 0.5, so... 42 meters, not 42.7. Approximately 42 meters. All right, cool. That does it. So again, um, nothing too complex in terms of the actual problem solving, figuring it out, going from the problem statement. Where are we? Going from, or just, there you go. From the problem statement here of the guy dropping the ball all the way to the equation. That's not hard, I don't think. Anyways, uh, we've done much harder things in this channel. But the solving of the integrals is just something that's iffy if you're not really, um, you know, if you're not practicing regularly. Uh, so hopefully this video can help you out and you can do it step by step following along. Uh, if you have any questions, as per usual, just leave them down below in the comment section. And um, if this video was helpful, consider giving it a like. We'll talk soon.